Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. I'm going to make a short video about 3S batteries for your micros. You know I fly a lot of 3S when it comes to our micros when we've got uh, you know 2.8 or generally I'll fly 3S on anything that I can think will handle it and that includes ESCs that are 10 amp. I'll fly 3S on those too. Uh, some are saying that that will eventually wear out but won't all the parts eventually wear out eventually isn't any sort of measurement so anyways i fly have fun and uh, i like th flying our micros on 3s and i've pulled out an assortment of batteries that you see in front of us and what i did was i took a page out of albert's book and i did uh, a resistance test on all these batteries and i did it several times three times to be specific I would charge and then discharge the battery, and then I would charge it again, or actually I would have it charged, take the resistance measurement, discharge it, recharge it, another resistance. I'd, so I'd do that three times. And pretty much it was the same every time. I kind of thought it might vary a little bit, but it was, to my recollection, it was the same. I have a chart here, and if we take a look at it, I've got that sorted and by C rating. And the C rating, I've said it many, many times, it really doesn't ma mean much. It's it's just a number that they stick on batteries. They can put whatever they want on there. And then we've got also in that chart, we've got the milliamp hour. And we've got some batteries on that chart that aren't here, but I just threw those on there because uh, you might want to get an idea for impedance. And it does give it uh, across the cells. Now, with all that aside, generally when it comes to the impedance value, you want a lower number. So you could see like the Admiral that's on that chart. I don't even think I had that out. No, I don't. Uh, the Admiral uh, didn't test out very well with triple digits. That was uh, pretty bad. The Wild Scorpion was uh, pretty bad as well. But so I have a host of batteries there, and some of them you probably are thinking that are, you know, normally are quite bad. But a few that might surprise you a bit, like the ReadyMade RC, this one doesn't come with an XT30. You have to uh, put an XT30 on there, so be careful. You know, do one wire at a time. Uh, is a pretty fair battery. It does sag a little harder than I expect it to. So when it comes to flying on something uh, with two and a half inch props or greater, if you do a long punch, like I tend to, I consider a long punch one where the, the motors wind up all the way and maybe just a moment more so you get the maximum lift out of your vehicle before you nose down or whatever your move you're going to do. This does tend to cause the beeper to go off. It does sag a a hard enough for that. This is a Florian battery, and uh, it's pretty much just a bench battery. I don't use it to fly at all because the beeper will go off when you're hovering. Um, I'm not going to cover all these. Uh, this one I want to mention because it's overpriced. I think this one, I think this was like $16 or $17, and it's, I would say, average of all the batteries I have. It's not one I reach for very often, and I've never gone back and bought more of these. So um, you can try one out for yourself, but... I don't know, maybe they have higher C-rated batteries, and this one is just okay. But, tattoo batteries, they're fine. I don't, excuse me, I don't tend to fly with this one very much, just because it's a little bit heavy. It would definitely have to be flown on something at least with 2.5mm props. I wouldn't put this on a 2S, uh, but it is a good battery. There's no two ways about that. And if we look at the impedance again, let's pull that back up. Uh, the impedance measured 30, 31 uh, depending upon the cell, which isn't necessarily the best. Uh, the best, isn't it? I think the best, if I look at that chart, was the GNB here. Uh, and this one with a really high rating. Remember, I've, I've talked about this before, the blue and the silver. I have uh, a version of the gray and the black, but it's not 3S, it's 2S. And they were bad. They were, you know, this kind of bad. Anyway, so this is a battery I can highly recommend. Uh, we do have a little extra weight because we have... An extra connector here but it also increases our flexibility without having to rewire something if we didn't want to uh, that's something to consider uh, but overall I'm pretty happy with this battery but it's hard to get a hold of these these things are out of stock constantly uh, you might remember a, well it was on my Instagram I posted I smacked into a tree and just dented this one actually looks dented but it's not I it kind of almost warped it had a little bit of a hump in it so that one had to go away I was worried uh, about that one exploding um, so I'm down to three of these, and these are actually pretty good batteries. They're a little bit on the heavy side, but again, with lar with 2.5 inch props or larger, I'll probably fly this. Uh, the Ishim batteries are nice and cheap, and I would say they're pretty decent performers. If we pull up the impedance again, we see that, you know, 40, 39, eh, it's okay. You know, it's not great. It's not terrible. Uh, these 
those aren't good. Um, this battery is old. I have to tell you that that is probably about a year old. And I did add um, a lead to it. I don't know why I did it this way. Oh, it's probably because I wanted to be able to wrap it around and my strap around like that. So I added a little bit of length. But anyways, uh, this battery is serviceable, but it's a little bit like the ready-made RC battery in that it sags fairly quickly. I think this one doesn't sag quite as quickly is my recollection. Um, but again, this battery is old. Uh, I think this one is six to eight months old. So of these batteries, I can recommend um, really only buying, if you're looking for flight performance, I can really only recommend that you buy any of those four. If the impedance value means something to you, the, the GNB has the lowest impedance value. Uh, the tattoo, where did that come in again? Uh, I'm looking at my chart, so about 30 or 31. The infinity, which is also, I would put that in the same category as the tattoo battery. That's kind of heavy, but it's a good battery. Um, if you're concerned about my uh, heat shrink there, that's clear heat shrink. <laughs> it's not exposed. Um, but the infinity battery, battery, you know, its impedance values, I, actually I misspoke, it was the lowest at 19 or 18. Um, so these two have the lowest, lowest impedance value, and then we have the E-Sheen again, which came in about 40. I prefer flying with these two batteries. I don't tend to fly this one so much because the leads are so short on these tattoo batteries. I like to take this lead and go around this side, that way I can take my battery strap through here, but as you can see with the wires, and if you got a pigtail coming in from the rear of your vehicle, I like to keep things tight and snug so it's not moving around or flopping around. But with these tattoo batteries, it's just a pain. Versus, I can do the same thing. I can do it this way on these batteries, and it works out just fine. So I can get my strap right through the middle. I can adjust this forward and back, and I just can't do that. Uh, if I go this way, then this kind of bulges out. I don't necessarily care that for, to strap it down this way, but that's just me. I'm a little bit hung up on that, but tattoo batteries are also fairly expensive. And my understanding is if someone's carrying tattoo batteries, there's a premium they must charge. There's really no sales to be had on tattoo batteries. As far as lower than normal prices, there's a there's a price floor that tattoo doesn't allow vendors to go under. So it's something to consider. I would say for your value, this is the battery. I, I, have, uh, I don't know how long this lasts. I have some of the nanotech batteries, and I'm not a huge fan of nanotech batteries. About a year and a half ago, I had a whole bunch of them, or not a whole bunch, I had a handful of them, and I just noticed after a certain number of flights, say 30 or something like that, that they didn't have the punch. They had a, had a lot more sag. They kind of fell off, I would say, is a, is a fairly descriptive way of saying it. And I've had, I've probably had 40 or 50 flights through these batteries, and I haven't experienced that yet. So it does seem like these were going to give us pretty good value. Long term, I don't know. Um, you know, I fly a lot of my LiPo batteries, which I don't have laying in front of us, but I have on the chart. Um, they're really good batteries, but you can't buy them with an XT30, and that's kind of disappointing. I wish Boris would make some with an XT30. And it's also hard to get those um, depending upon where you live. You have to either live in the States and only buy the, the kind that they have in the state warehouse, or you have to live in Europe uh, or Germany. Otherwise, you're paying really high uh, shipping costs. So that's a little bit about 3S. Now, one thing I want to tack on here to the end of our discussion, hopefully those that are subscribers and come back and listen are still here, because I really don't like the way I'm doing giveaways. I always feel like I'm screwing it up. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm sure I've got some messages to look at. I, I think I butchered the last one really bad, and, it, and it, it bothers me. I feel bad for people who may have rightfully been selected by the random comment picker, but I somehow butchered it. But I don't know how to necessarily make it right. So I want to kick one idea off of all of you and see what you think. The only thing I can do that seems to be that I can kind of assure that the people who receive giveaway products are kind of invested in this hobby other than just getting free stuff. You know, I can't really tell if someone's invested in free stuff. They can make an FPV name or something and not have anything on there at all and could still possibly win. So this was the idea and I... I don't feel good about this idea, but it seems to be the one way that I can possibly ensure that whoever wins um, a giveaway of a, a vehicle might actually be interested in learning to fly or has already a pilot themselves. And that is that I would start a Patreon and just have a $1 Patreon on there. Uh, I don't even know what the things are called, like donation or something. Um, I haven't looked into that deeply. I, I say $1 because I suspect there's got to be a minimum. 
and a dollar might be the minimum. I think I've seen that on some of the Patreons. So then, you know, like say I've got a month where I'm going to do a giveaway. I can mention it in a video like this. Then you can jump into the Patreon. You can do your $1 like a raffling. And then when the giveaway is over with, then, you know, the next month comes up and say, I don't do a giveaway. You can then un-Patreon, if that's a word, to where the dollar isn't extracted from your account. And we don't have... Um, you know, that continual, I, I don't want to call it a revenue stream. I don't want your money. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want anyone's money. I want you to spend your money on this hobby. That's why I do this. I want you to spend money on batteries that you don't like and, and props that you don't like, but experiment and have fun. I don't want to make this, and I have no plans on making this some sort of job. I do this because I like to do it. I like interacting with everyone. I like the comments that I receive. I like flying. I like crashing. I like trying different things. And I hope that you do too. So that's one way I have thought of that I could start a Patreon page, do a $1 Patreon, and then that $1 gets you into a giveaway. And then you can choose from one giveaway to the next whether you want to be involved with it or not. Say I have a selection of products that you're just not interested in. You can un-Patreon, hopefully before Patreon extracts the dollar, however it does that, and then you're not out the dollar. Um, if you have other ideas, I am all ears. I just want the giveaways to go to people who want to fly, and I know most of you do too. I've seen some somewhat heated discussion uh, in the comments in previous giveaways, and I, I'm i kind of torn because I just want them to go somewhere and find a home, but when they go to someone who might not be interested in piloting at all, I just don't know what's going to happen to them, and I kind of find that uh, to be a little bit disgraceful. It needs to go to someone who's going to at least fly and crash at once. That's That would be my preference. If it goes to someone who flies and crashes once, that's better than it just going somewhere and sitting on a shelf and showing their friends, oh, I have a drone. Okay, so that's that's a bit of a rant. Hopefully I've edited that down so it doesn't offend anyone or take too much of your time. Please leave your comments about the giveaways down below. I'm open to any all and all ideas. I just don't know a way. I don't know a really good way of really shrinking it down to where it's just people who want to be pilots, people who want to experience this hobby or not. Um, the internet's a big place and everybody is welcome to play. But 3S batteries, I can recommend you get some of these. When it comes to value, I would get this one. Secondary, when it comes to value, this one. When it comes to flat-out performance, I'd go for one of these two. All right, I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>